Dr. Mindy here, and on this video, we're gonna talk about what can you drink in your fasting window. So if you are new to my channel, I just wanna say welcome. I am still on a mission. We're still working to get a million people fasting. Fasting, as you will discover here, has so many benefits that I wanna make sure you understand how to customize this for you. So if you're new, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And those of you who share my videos out, super grateful for you. Okay, the, I'm gonna make this really simple because we get asked all the time, coffee, tea, diet soda, juice. These are all questions I get on a daily basis or my team gets. So I wanted to leave one video showing what the acceptable liquids are with fasting. The first thing I wanna tell you is that what determines your blood sugar often is your microbiome and your microbiome and my microbiome may be vastly different. So in some cases like coffee, I don't have a real tried and true, uh, like do this, don't do that because it's really bio-individual. So let me try to make it simple for you. There is a blood sugar test you can do, and here's how it works. You take a blood sugar reading, and then you drink the drink that you are thinking you want to incorporate into your fasting window. Drink it, however much you would drink it, cup of coffee, maybe you put cream in it, maybe you've decided to put collagen powder in it, whatever, put it in there, and then a half an hour later, take a second reading another blood sugar reading. If those two numbers are equal, then it worked for you. If that second number is lower than the first one, it really worked for you. But if that second number is higher than the first one, then we know that it took you out of a fasted state. This is what I do with every patient I've had. This is what we do in our academy when we're teaching people blood sugar. So I really want to make sure that you are testing it for yourself. Now, having said that, there are some basic principles that we all can pretty much follow. But again, there is that bio individuality component that we have to consider. So let's start with the helpful liquids. These are the ones that I incorporate into my diet uh, or into my fasting window often with great success. So water, of course, mineral water. I personally love Grolsteiner. Sometimes I like a little bubbly. Most of the time in a fasting window, I'll grab a glass of mineral water with a little sparkle in it. Coffee may work for you, works for most people, but again, you gotta check it. Tea, all kinds of tea. With coffee and tea, I would really encourage you to help make sure that it's organic because it, any, any of those two that have pesticides in them, have chemicals in them, those are going into your body, they're gonna affect your liver, and over time, they're gonna make fasting harder. They're also quite dangerous. Element, you all know Fast Training Week is sponsored by Element. Put a pack of minerals in your, in your water they come in these really cool packs. I got these all, like they're now like hanging out at all my desks. I got them in my backpack where I put my computer. Putting these in water in a fasting window will not only be a nice little taste in your mouth, but can also help you elongate your fast. So don't rule out the power of a little mineral pack. MCT oil, if many of you saw the interview I did with Dr. Gundry on my Instagram page, and Dave Asprey did this, said the same thing on my Resetter podcast, that when we are working on adding MCT oil into our fasting window, sometimes, not all the time, but many times I'll even say, MCT oil will help us get over into that fat burning place a whole lot quicker. If you wanna go into a deeper ketosis, if you're struggling in this longer fast, this is fast training week, so it's possible that if you're struggling to get to that 22 hour mark of fasting, a little bit of MCT oil in your coffee or your tea can help kill that hunger that happens in your brain and elongate your fast. So I really like MCT oil as a tool. And then something new you're gonna hear me talk a lot about, in my Reset Academy, we are gonna be doing a three-day water fast 
in April, at the end of April, and we're gonna be teaching how to use hydrogen water to really help you have a more successful fast, specifically a longer fast. So if you wanna know more about hydrogen water, if you're looking for that three-day water fast experience, come join me in my Reset Academy. I'm so excited to do this as a community to get together. Having said that, let's talk about what are absolute no's. And one is a maybe. So, soda. Hopefully you know that eating, it, fasting is more than not just stopping food. You have to look at any drink that would raise your blood sugar. So, of course, a Coke, hopefully you know, would raise your blood sugar. Diet soda, there's evidence that NutraSweet actually makes you more insulin resistant and will stimulate more hunger in the brain. So let's get out all diet sodas. Juices. Fasting, the way I talk about it here, is not juice fasting. So it's not cleansing with green juice. It, it, it's not a juice cleanse. So I'm not a fan of juice cleanses. They spike your blood sugar too much. I'm a fan of just letting the intelligence of your body do its thing. Protein drink. A protein drink is also most likely gonna pull you out of a fasted state, so let's avoid it. Collagen powder in your coffee may cause, your, it could be filled with too much protein taking you out of autophagy, and it also might be a problem for spiking blood sugar. So if you don't mind being kicked out of autophagy and you're wanting to just be in fat burning mode, collagen powder might work for you, but you're gonna need to look, work on it and look at it from the perspective of what does it do to your blood sugar? Uh, the other one I didn't put on here is alcohol. We don't do any alcohol in a fasted state, so I just wanna make sure we're clear on that. And then liquid aminos. There's been a lot of discussion in my academy on liquid aminos. Remember that when we're looking at something as simple as the concept of autophagy, autophagy happens because of a deficit in nutrients in that cell. So what happens when you add aminos in, you could stop autophagy even though your blood sugar didn't spike. So it all comes back to what you're trying to do with your fasts. If you're really trying to do some cleansing, I would encourage you to focus on avoiding the liquid aminos in the fasting window. It can be great in the eating window. So don't completely throw it out. It just might not be your tool in the fasting window. So there you go. There it is in a nutshell. The acceptable liquids, how to test it, what to avoid. It, this is a tricky one because you can be in, think you're in a fasted state and mess things up a little bit by adding in some of the wrong liquids. And it's quite possible that adding in the right liquids is gonna make fasting so much easier. So it's Fast Training Week. If you want a companion guide and you want the information I'm talking about over the last couple of videos, just put companion guide in the notes. My team will send you a link. We, we are doing something different for Fast Training Week this time. We are bringing the Q&A into my academy, so if you wanna join me on a live Zoom call, Q&A call, um, we're doing that in the academy, and you can come join me there, and we'll talk a little bit more about this Fast Training Week. Just put the academy in your notes. If you wanna join us for the three-day water fast, we'll be there as well. So, but as always, fasting rocks. And these little tips and tricks can be the difference between you really mastering this, this lifestyle and you moving away from the lifestyle, which I hope you do not do. As always, from the bottom of my heart, I hope that helps.